Welcome to the Happy Tans Podcast, where you will learn everything you need to know about running a successful sunless tanning business. We will interview some of the industry's top business owners to find out how they took a passion and turned it into a prosperous business. And here's your host, Grant Conscious. Hey everyone, Grant Conscious here from Happy Tans. Thank you so much for joining me on this first edition of the podcast. As you can tell from the intro, the goal of this podcast is to help you to start and grow your own sunless tanning business. I wanted to bring in some successful business owners within the industry so they could tell you firsthand what they've been through to get their business to where it is today. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of effort, but it is possible. I hope that you can find some inspiration and some information that can help you to grow your own business. This podcast is for you, for the sunless tanning community, so if you have any feedback, any questions, or if there's anything that I can do better, please let me know. You can always reach out to me at happytans.com or my direct email is grant at happytans.com. I would be more than happy to help as much as I can. Again, this is for the sunless tanning community, so feedback is always welcome. Please bring any questions that you have, and I'll be happy to add those in as we see fit. Thank you very much, and I hope that you enjoy our first interview with Kelly. Hello and welcome to the Happy Tans Podcast. I am joined by the wonderful Kelly. Kelly, how are you doing today? Hey, Grant. I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for asking and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for joining me on this initial episode of the Happy Tans Podcast. I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I knew I wanted to interview you, so thank you so much for spending your beautiful California morning with me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. So, I just want to start off to gather a little information about you to kind of uh, introduce the listeners to you, to yourself and to your business. So just take a couple of minutes to, to introduce and share whatever you'd like to share with them. Okay. Um, I am very proud to say I'm uh, the owner of Flawless in Lodi, California. Um, I began my journey about 11 years ago after being diagnosed with skin cancer myself. Um, so then I decided that I was going to be an advocate for others, including our younger generation, to introduce them the healthier way to achieve that color, um, tan color skin that we all um, enjoy having. And so that's when I began my mission. Um, began out as I started out as mobile. I did that for four years, and my clientele grew rapidly. So then I just got decided it was best to go ahead and do a storefront. Um, that way I could have, um, the availability to meet more people and, you know, be able to tan more coming through because mobile is really hard. Sure. Yeah. And I, I think, I know a lot of people start off that way because there's really no overhead and you invest, you know, five, Absolutely. 600 bucks, maybe, you know, maybe a thousand dollars total after training and everything. And you have a, you know, a new business that you can get a return and start making some profit pretty quickly. But it's also somewhere to start. So, you know, the mobile is the way to go while you build up that foundation like you did. Um, and then when you get to the point where you're comfortable enough, you're able to kind of jump into that and then take the next steps, whatever that may be. You know, some people are doing, I think they're doing home studios or they might be opening in a spot like you did. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of people get caught up um, in the minutia, so to speak, and they get caught up in all the good things that happen in their business. But there's also a lot of downs when you're an entrepreneur um, in any industry and in the sunless industry as well. So I just kind of want to touch on a time where you had like maybe a, a real hard time in your business where you question yourself, maybe question something as small as your technique, uh, question the business in general to just kind of help people understand that that happens to everybody and that they're, you know, you have to make it through that. So do you have a specific time that you would consider your, your worst moment in your business? Um, you know, I think I do. And I think this is with anyone that's starting out in a business. Um, we have that passion in the beginning um, and we're a go-getter. And then, you know, and when it starts to slow down a little bit, Grant, we kind of like fall back into a, like a little a hole and go, hmm, was this really what I wanted to do? Um, is it worth it? But the, when you're down in your, in your downtime, that's when you need to actually do your own self-promoting. Um, it's all well and good <clears throat> in the beginning whenever, you know, the summer's hitting, everyone wants to spray tan. But when it's time for them to put their clothing on and they don't really want the tan, then or don't need it, should I say not want, because we all want it. Um, we kind of, as business owners in the sunless industry, we do see our, we look at our profit numbers and they're going downhill, but that's the time for you to actually build your business. 
So that was a struggle for me. Um, you know, you, when you start seeing the money flow in the beginning and then it just slowly just completely drops, we do start questioning ourselves. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I've, you know, I've talked to a lot of people in the, this industry and that's, you know, that's uh, not just for you. That's for anybody that's in the industry. Obviously, there's a there's a time during the year where it's really, really busy. And then for a few months, it does slow down, and it's really going to vary depending on where you're located and the colder states. It's probably a couple extra months that people don't want, like you said, don't want to tan. Um, but it's also important, you know, out of sight, out of mind. So you got to make sure you're working, like you said, promoting your business, going out, probably meeting some people or doing something to, to help better your business for next year to set yourself up. Uh, yes, um, absolutely. You never want to disappear off the radar. You always want to be on top of it. Yes, yes, 100%. So on, on the opposite side of the spectrum there, I'm sure you've had some amazing moments in your business, maybe some aha moments or times where you were like, wow, this is this is really working, you know, kind of to show that the business is more legit in your own eyes. So if you had to share a best moment, uh, whatever that may be, do you have a specific thing that sticks out in your mind? Um, a best moment is just being um – to me, referrals is a best moment for me because I know if I've made one person happy, Grant, they're going to talk about me and the word's going to get out. So that alone says enough for me. Um, so I really take pride in what I do. And I think with any person, you know, doing their own service and, and trying to build their own business, they must be passionate about what they're doing or they're not going to succeed at it. And I do put my heart and soul into every bit of it. And I think my clients actually see that when they meet me. Um, I'm very warm, you know, and happy go, go lucky, but yet I'm more concerned about the outcome of their tan once they leave me. Um, so being, when you talk about a moment, I think every day is a good moment for me because each day I get to meet new people. I get to build new relationships that are eventually going to, you know, spread out and become bigger for me as well. Yeah, that's great. And like you said, the referrals are huge. I think a lot of people miss the boat on that. They might not ask for them, but other than asking for them, which I always recommend for people to do in any business that you're in, there's also the fact of just performing your service so good that people want to refer you. If I go to somebody and they give me an amazing haircut and somebody's looking for a haircut, I'm going to tell everybody about that. Like that, that sticks out in my mind. And I know because of my wife obviously has come to you for spray tans, the, the level of service that you provide is, you know, it sets the bar really high and that is, you know, that speaks for itself. Yeah. And you definitely want to stand out. You want to be different. You know, you want to be, um, you, I mean, you're, you want that client to feel comfortable and to want to come back. Um, so it's really important. Connections are important. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, so on top of that, as your business has grown, I'm sure your responsibilities have changed a little bit, especially when you go from a mobile to being in a physical brick and mortar location like you are now. How have your how do you keep up with the growth and success from year to year, month to month, whatever it may be when you go from somebody that's mobile and probably has, you know, a couple tans a week, maybe, maybe three you know, five or six a month to where you're doing multiple tents per day. Now you have people working at your location. I mean, how does it change for you? Has it changed that much? Um, change, yes, it definitely has. And change is good. I believe that helps you grow as an individual. Um, my biggest thing was time management because um, it's not just tanning now that I'm overseeing. I'm actually overseeing, you know, all the aspects of the spa itself. And um, so, and when you've got employees, or not really employees, but ladies that are working their own business within my business, you know, you have to make sure that everyone is up to par, all customer service is up to standards. So there's a lot that goes into it. I wouldn't change a moment of it. I think that each day I'm, I'm learning as I go, and that's the most important part for me, um, is taking the good and the bad and making it wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Time management, I think everybody can improve on that. Mm -hmm. I know myself, and I'm, I know you do, you're, you're strict about the calendar and stuff. I'm the same way, and I also like making a list of the night before I go to bed, I make a list of the things I need to get done tomorrow. And that kind of helps to map out the day, as well as obviously you have your daily schedule. If you have appointments scheduled or phone calls, whatever it may be, um, you want to make sure to get those done, but you also have that to-do list, so to speak, the, the infamous, I guess, to-do list that people always just kind of make. But that's important to stick to, to to stay on time. 
Exactly. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a stickler when it comes to staying on time because it just drives me mad when I'm not on time. And that's one thing with my clients. You know, I want to make sure that when they're coming into my place, that I'm on time with my service as well because they're taking time out of their life and their family to come to me. So that's important time management in, in, in my calendar aspect and in my work aspect and life itself is very, very important. Yeah, and, and a lot of people always dismiss the fact of time because, and they don't think about it, but time is the one resource that we cannot get any more of. You can make more money, you can get new clients, you can do any of that, but time, you, you, we're never going to get this time back. So it's important it. to make the most, yeah. It's important to make the most of that. It's important to set a schedule, you know, for your clients. If they're a couple minutes late, it's okay. But as anybody knows, going to a doctor or dentist's office, you sit there and wait. Nobody wants to waste their time doing that. So it's important to stay on schedule even with your client uh, the client appointments as well. Exactly. So, Kelly, if you had to think about the one particular thing, if there was one thing that's made your business uh, as successful as it has been over the past, I think you said, 11 years, does one thing stick out of your mind? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things that have contributed to it, obviously, but there's probably one thing that you say, I do this really well. This one thing has really helped to take my business up to the next level. Um, I think, granted, it goes back to being passionate about what I do. I have a purpose for what I'm doing. Um, therefore, it makes it easy for me. Um, my purpose is to make sure that, you know, they are completely satisfied. Um, I do back up all my services 100%. I'm one of those people that I, if I'm not going to give 100%, I'm not going to do it. And that's the way that I expect everyone else to be as well. Um, so being passionate is the most important thing for me. Um, if I'm not passionate, then I'm not going to succeed. Yeah, and that's true with so many things in life. Um, people might start a business to chase money, but eventually that's going to run out. So like you have something deeper behind your story. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's important for people to to have, whether it's making people feel beautiful, whether it's make you know protecting people from from other alternative ways of tanning, whatever that may be. I, you know, it's important for it to be something that you're passionate about. Uh, I definitely agree with that. Exactly, and you know we're making it. You know we're making an impression into the world now, and it, it, that's what's the most important part for me too. Because um, if I could go back, Grant, you know, 20 years ago and do spray tanning or even do sunless tanning um, over the beds and the in the sun, I totally would have and probably have saved myself a lot of, you know, the damages and stuff. But then I think about it. If I hadn't endured that myself, I probably would not be where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. Every, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah, sometimes it's it's tough, but they all do make, you know, they lead you in the right direction. And that's definitely what's happened. That's true. It uh, seems to have happened with you. Yeah. So. So on top of that, so you kind of mentioned backing up the service 100%. I see a lot of, of, of questions in the forums and threads about, you know, would you give a refund for this? Would you do it for this? Everybody's different in the way that they handle that. But I think that's an important situation for people to understand that there are going to be times, you know, where people aren't satisfied. You've been in the business 11 years, and you said that people, you know, I'm sure you still have people that come back and ask or say, hey, this wasn't right. And I'm sure you own up to those. But you know, one, does that happen after 11 years? Two, how do you handle that? Is it a case-by-case -case basis? I mean, you stand by it 100%, but if it's Sally Sue, it's the first time she comes. Four days later, she calls and says, hey, I'm orange. My tan was terrible. It's peeling. Comes up with all this stuff, and, you know, even if she won't show you a picture or something to prove it, how do you handle that? Um Professionally, um, you have to definitely be on a professional level. Um, the, the first thing would, would be not to say it's not your fault, um, but not to claim fault as well. Um, so with me personally, Grant, I always make sure that while I am, I'm doing a spray tan, I am pointing out things with, um, within, with what I notice on a client that could be a potential problem. So I know if they've not exfoliated. I also know if they have product buildup on their skin. And I bring that to their attention. That way, when they do leave me and their tans develop the next day, they don't have questions, you know, what is this, what is that, because I've already addressed those before they actually happened. Um, so if I do have, like you said, Sally Sue, that, you know, didn't like her tan four days later, um, that's a, that's a kind of different scenario because most people are going to tell me that there is an issue within the first 24 hours. Um, do I still have issues? Everybody's going to have issues because everybody's skin is different. Um, I'm a professional, but yet I do make mistakes um, that I will own up if I've made my mistake. So yeah, that, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, go ahead. I was just saying that that's important for people to understand that you're never going to be perfect. A lot of people are hesitating to start. You know, they've, they've probably tanned their friends and their family for free to kind of get used to it. And then they're hesitating because they're not sure about this. They're afraid about this. But what people don't understand and what I want everybody to understand is what Kelly's saying. Even after 11 years, she still has issues. And now, yes, yeah, she can tell if people haven't exfoliated, you know, where there's going to be troubled areas. But, Kelly, you didn't start like that. And I think people, you know, sometimes have a hard time starting and they want to be, you know, 100 percent before they start. And that's not going to happen. So and it's you really got to just get started. Yeah. No, I agree. You know what, Grant? I did the same thing. I tanned, you know, I discounted my tans because that, that was learning for me. That was my way of, you know making I knew I was going to make mistakes but that was my it was it was learning every mistake is a learning tool you can take it and use it um to your advantage um so don't don't be scared to leap and take that you know if you're passionate about doing spray tans by all means do it step out because you have to make that mistake before you know how to fix it yeah yeah and that's that's really good and you know that that is so important for people to understand that you're going to make the mistakes. It's understandable, but that's how you grow. If you're not making mistakes, you're not growing. That's, that's really good to hear. And I, I know that you take those things that people, you know, in the end, it's feedback to help you grow. It's not, I think a lot of people get defensive. No, I didn't do a bad tan. I'm certified. I've been doing this for six years. This client doesn't know, but in the end, you're in a client service business. Mm -hmm. So if your clients aren't happy, then you're not doing something right. Sometimes it's, it's tough to look in the mirror, but a lots of times we need to do that and make sure that we're, you know, doing the right things, whether it's preparing them with the proper pre-tan care or maybe taking a couple extra minutes to address issues before it's, mm -hmm. you know, before the tan, during the tan, whatever it may be. And that's, that's different for everybody, but it's important. It is. A, it is important. And, you know, granted, it only takes that one person to not like what you've done to spread the word. So yep. you definitely want to you want to listen. Always listen yep. first before you speak. Yeah, and if if a lot of people if if you're um, nerdy like me and you get on Yelp to look at everybody's negative reviews to figure out what's going on, no, I know I'm the only one that does that. But anyway, <laughs> if you look at most of the negative reviews on on any website, it, it's people that are you know they've had a they're having a tough time with whatever their product service, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a spray tan, and they're saying hey. You know, they didn't rectify this. They didn't handle it. They didn't own up to it. I mean, for me, come on, it's a spray tan, whatever, 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever you charge. I put that money back in their pocket, give them a free tan, do something to, mm -hmm. to and then figure out what, you know, what they were dissatisfied about. Sure, you're going to get somebody every once in a while that's going to take advantage of you. But, you know, that's on them. They can do that. Uh, it's definitely not worth the negative publicity it's because not. your your haters are going to talk a lot louder than the people that really love you. So yeah, that's true. And unfortunately, most people seem to you know lean toward that. So we have to just make sure that we're just we keep it professional. Um, you know, it, never never point fingers. I think that's the biggest thing. Don't ever say that you didn't do it because then that comes off very very negative. Yeah, yeah, that that's really good. That's that's a good point, Kelly. Um, to kind of get into something a little more technical, um, okay. just to kind of touch on a couple of things, like what what type of equipment do you use? Is there a specific reason why? Um, anything you want to share about that? Um, I do use the Mini Mist um, by Apollo. It's very um, durable, small. It fits into my little quiet box because it's, it's loud. So I have a quiet box that I keep it in. So it kind of, you know, diminishes the loudness so I can communicate with my client. Um, it comes like with just a regular like pull, black plastic um, like gun. I did get the upgraded gun, so I kind of utilize both of those guns depending on what type of tan I'm wanting to provide to the uh, the client. Yeah, that's a great machine. I love the Apollo line. Um, they, you know, they're all. A lot of people ask. Everybody wants a quiet machine. Everybody wants an affordable machine. Everybody wants a light machine. You know all these different things. They want a machine that sprays heated. All this kind of stuff. But in the end, they're all. To me, I've heard a lot of machines, and they're all pretty much on the same decibel level. They're all pretty loud because they're producing mm -hmm. a lot it's of a power. Compressor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is producing a lot of power, um, but, you know, it, it does get the job done, and most people don't care because you're spray tanning them for about three to five minutes. They're just going to mm -hmm. drift off into their little thought while you spray them. So yeah, exactly. And you want something that's dur durable. You know, I've had the Mini Mast, um, I think I've went through three in the past 11 years, and that's only because I had a backup one. So it's 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 a very affordable one, and it's and it's one that you can definitely depend on. Yeah. 
So, Kelly, before you started out, there's a lot of different uh, training and certification programs out there now. I'm sure when you started 11 years ago, there might have been one or two. Um, obviously, the Internet's grown a lot of this stuff. The information has grown online. Did you personally go through any training? Would you suggest it to people that are starting out or even people that have already, you know, been in the business for a couple of years? Um, had, I did not personally go through any training grant. I was one of those um, pers- I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that I teach myself. Um, so I did my own research. I did my own tanning to, and I would spray tan people and see where, where I, what I needed to improve on. Um, so my own research, my own mistakes had cr- had created my own training for myself. Um, now, over the years, as I learned, I was able to create my own training manual. Um, I also did some personal training myself for spray tanning. And I end up working with a large company um, that produces solution. I helped do their their training as well for a couple of years. But you do ask that, you know, you just asked if I would recommend it. Absolutely. Um, because you're going to save yourself time that I didn't. I kind of went the long way around things. Um, I, I tend to do that quite often, actually. Um, but I, I went the long way around. But training is really, really important because you're going to get the basics. Um, that you're going to need the basic fundamentals that you're going to need to to launch your business. Um, you want to know FDA rules. You want to understand, you know, the skin types and the solution types. You you must do that. If not, you're not doing yourself a service, and you're definitely not doing your clientele a service. Yeah, and I think the knowledge, knowledge is power, and I think the clients can tell when you don't know things. So Absolutely. That, you know, Spending a little extra money and a little extra time learning something so you're more knowledgeable is a lot better than not doing it. I mean, if you want to reverse roles and act like you're going to somebody for a, a skin care, whether it's tanning or some other service, then I'm sure that you would agree with that, you know, on this on the other side of it. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, if a client was to ask a question and I could not answer it or I stumbled upon it, they're going to lose confidence in me immediately. Um, so you definitely want to know you want to know your stuff. So training is very, very important. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And, and Kelly, I don't, I don't mean to circle back, but I wanted, I pulled up this statistic I was looking for because I knew it was important. A couple, a couple times in the interview, you have mentioned uh, the customer service level that you provide, and I know because I've been there, the level of service you provide versus some other places that I've been to. And this statistic is always alarming to me that 80% of companies say that they deliver quote unquote superior customer service. But 8% of people think that the same companies deliver superior customer service. So that's saying that 8 out of every 10 businesses think that they provide basically amazing customer service, but only but less than 1 out of 10 people actually agree with that. So I just want to put that out there and not necessarily for, to get as much feedback from you as just to point that out to people that – just because you think you're providing excellent or superior customer service doesn't mean your customers think so. So it's important to always go above and beyond mm-hmm. what, you know, what anybody considers good customer service because that stands out, that, that experience stands out in people's minds. Absolutely. And you know what? They are the foundation of your business, you know, so you definitely want their positive feedback. And if they're giving you negative feedback, take it as constructive criticism and learn from it. Yes, constructive criticism, that is great because – We all hear that. We all need to hear that. That's important. And if you don't want to hear that, then, you know, eventually you're going to hit a wall and your your business and yourself, you're not going to grow. So that that is definitely an important thing uh, for people to remember. Absolutely. So, Kelly, uh, one last question for you. Um, If you could write a letter to yourself 11 years ago when you were just starting out, what would you say? What would I say? That's a good question. Um. I would tell myself to be more patient, the good things come to those that wait, um, and to continue to continue to be open to suggestions, continue to grow. Um, not everything that you receive um, is going to be top notch in the beginning, but in the end, if you've really worked hard for it, it's always going to circle around back to you. So all of the hard work that I put into it has definitely came back. So I've been very blessed. So the, my letter to myself, the topic probably would be is be patient. Yeah, patience is a virtue, that's for sure. 
And definitely good things come to people that are patient. And I see a lot of people that are getting frustrated in the forums. They're just starting out. Maybe they've been in, in it for like, you know, two, three, four months, some even a year, and they're still struggling. You know, why don't, why don't I have clients uh, mm-hmm. or that many clients and this and that? But, you know, you need to make sure that, one, you're patient, and, two, you need to make sure that you're taking the right steps and doing the right things to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. That's true. And learn from others. Be willing to learn from someone else. You know, don't always just keep your, you can't stay in your own box. You must come out of that box in order to make it bigger. Um, Because we sent a lot of people, including myself in the beginning, Grant, I was closed minded. It was all about me. I knew everything. And that took me, um, I had to really learn. I had to learn that it ain't all about me. There's, there's so many people out there that have more knowledge and I needed to, I, I learned from them. So always be willing to learn from others because in the end, you, someone's going to end up learning from you as well. Yep. Just like all the people that are listening to this are going to learn from you, Kelly. That's something I want to really create with the Happy Tans podcast is a sense of community. I think the sunless tanning industry is extremely protective of Everything from the products they use, the equipment they use, the techniques they do, marketing, so on and so forth. And I think that sharing, you know, what you learn is going to go so much further if you help people. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. I I plan to give a lot of a a lot, a lot of free information away as much as I can give to people to help them succeed, because ultimately, you know, that that's what makes me happy to see successful people. You're the same way. So I definitely appreciate you spending uh, a few minutes with us here today and sharing your knowledge. And if you, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you have questions, I'm open for that or, you know, suggestions. So I definitely want to put that out there. I'm definitely willing to help those that are in need of, of wanting to learn, absolutely. Yeah, and Kelly, if you want to share your email address maybe in case people have questions. Sure. Um, it's Kelly, and I spell it K-E-L-I, and that's at Flawless, and that is spelled F-L-A-W-L-O-U-S dot com. All right, Kelly, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for putting your email out there. If anybody has questions for me, you can reach me at grant at happytans.com. I would be happy to help you. You can probably find me on the Facebook forums or anywhere else. I'll give you some time. I'll get on a phone call with you if you have questions about anything related to tanning or marketing or websites, whatever it may be. Again, Kelly, thank you so much for your time, and I hope that everybody enjoys it. Thanks, Grant.